friends, welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny. If you're new here, welcome. Today I am going to be making up some knish and I thought I'd bring it along with me. One of my favorite things. And I'm going to also show you how I make a smaller appetizer style. So a more traditional way and a smaller appetizer style and tell you how to change it up. Anyway friends, pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. Okay, the second time I have tried to film this for you, I forgot to hit record this time, totally my fault. This is the dough for the knish. In here I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, one egg, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. I have a half a cup of oil, I'm sorry, a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of bacon fat in here. And now I'm just bringing it together into a dough and then I'm going to let my machine knead it on low for five minutes. Okay, my five minutes is up. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. This is a super easy dough. Can't you just, it's impossible to mess this dough up. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. 15 minutes. We don't have to let it rise. It's not going to rise. We're going to cover it. We're going to let it sit there 20 minutes while we make our filling. Okay, in this pan I've got about three pounds of potatoes. It really takes closer to two pounds for this recipe, but that was the end of the bag and I figure I will just use them up. I am also putting in a medium onion. You can do medium large, depends on how much you like onion, I guess. <laughs> you want to put just enough water to cover the potatoes. The onions, if they stick out a little bit, that's fine because they'll steam. I'm going to start this, but I'm also going to add salt and beef bouillon. I'm sorry, chicken bouillon. So I'm going to salt that up. So that was probably a teaspoon and a half of salt. I'm going to add chicken bouillon to this. A good teaspoon, a good rounded teaspoon. Because the chicken is going to add a lot of good flavor. I'm going to cook those until they're fork tender. Okay, my potatoes are done. I drained three quarters of the liquid off and I kept it in a cup because that's what I'm going to use to mash my potatoes with. I will not be using any cream in this potato recipe. I am going to put some black pepper in, about a half a teaspoon, and about a half a teaspoon of salt since I drained the liquid off. Half a teaspoon of onion powder. I am gonna put some butter in here. About four tablespoons of butter. And this is not traditional, but I like it. I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I just think it tastes good with the broth and the onions. And I'm going to smash these. You can leave them as lumpy as you want, mash them as smooth as you want. I'm going to leave it like that so there's still some lumps because that's how I like them. I'm going to taste it for salt. The salt is perfect. Cooked with the onion and the broth, it is excellent flavor. If you need to thin them out a little bit more, you can use your reserved cooking liquid. Okay, so I've got a surface flour. Okay, so I'm going to do half of these regular, and then the other half I'm going to do smaller for appetizer style. Whoever heard of an appetizer style knish? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, they're delicious. I made these mini knish for Super Bowl one year. I had leftovers of everything but the knish. going to need flour because the dough is sticky. You want to just kind of roll it out as thin as you can, maybe the size of your board. I'm going to try to do it 
about the size of the white part of my cutting board. We'll see. So half inch, quarter inch thick if you can. If not, don't worry about it. It will still be delicious. Okay. So once you've got it rolled out, you just get your potato. My potato is actually still kind of hot, hotter than I like it when I'm putting it in the dough. pans ready lined with my um, silicone baking sheet and then now you just kind of roll this up bench scraper about two I, I usually cut these about two and a half inches and then you pick them up you squeeze one side shut So whatever side seems to be sealing, I uh, just pick whatever side looks like it's sealing better after the cut. I can feel my potato so hot. put a rug next to the stove for me, you know, with cushion, I'm standing and canning and stuff. I trip over it every time I walk over there. Some people completely encase their knish, and that's okay too. I like it round with the top open. That's how, just how I've always made it. But you can seal up all the sides and leave it in the little square. I have seen that. Actually, that's how you get it when you go to the Jewish Deli in Scottsdale. New York Bagels and Dialis. I love that place, but their knish isn't my favorite, I'll be enough. And the, this, this pastry around the potato is so good. You're going to love this. Okay, now that is the regular knish. I'm just going to use half of this. I'm going to leave half of that and freeze it. It's a little tiny piece of knish dough, but then I can make myself a fresh knish when I want to. breakfast this morning I saved out two pieces of bacon so to my potatoes I'm going to crumble this bacon in you can put green onions to mine though I'm gonna add a little bit of chopped raw onion because it's my husband's favorite and mine This is just some extra sharp cheddar that I grated up for dinner last night. That's what's left. I'm trying to use up all my leftovers out of the fridge. Today I've been working on cleaning out the refrigerator. My least favorite job of the house. Okay, so now we've got bacon and cheddar. You could put sausage in here. You could put any kind of cheese. Board there. Okay. I'm going to move that back over there while I finish rolling this out. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to call that good. We're going to put the line of our filling in. Now, traditional knish is just the first one I showed you. I don't, we, I don't even put any cream in the potatoes for that. Just butter. Salt and pepper, and I use chicken broth. So this is non-traditional knish. So if you go out for knish at a Jewish deli, you're not going to find it with bacon and cheddar in it. I'll cut these a little smaller because we want minis. Harder to seal the smaller one, just do the best you can. If it leaks out of the bottom with the cheese, it'll form like a crust underneath. When I mash the potatoes, of course, I leave a, a few lumps, so sometimes you get like a big chunk. And keep in mind, you're not going to get perfect circles. I mean, you can. I, it's just for us, so I'm not worried about it. But some of them will look. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Here are my knish. I am going to take my egg wash. And I'm going to egg wash the whole thing. Even the top where the potato is. You can sprinkle them with a little bit of coarse salt, which I like to do because that salty pop, especially with potato, this is pretzel salt. You can use kosher salt. I love pretzel salt. Any chance I get to use it on a bread. Okay, into the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. Keep an eye on your oven. Usually mine cooks about 35-ish minutes for the big ones aren't really that big and then the mini ones will be closer to 25 30 minutes you can mix a little bit of um spicy mayo or i'm sorry spicy mustard like a grainy spicy mustard with a mayo for dip for these or you could just do the mustard, whatever mustard you like. Almost any mustard works good. The only one I found that I didn't like with, with it was the sweet mustard. Okay, the smaller knish are out of the oven. Some of them are a little bit bigger, and then some of them are perfect. Ooh, they're hot. They're perfect size for appetizers. So if you're making these for a party for appetizers, just... Be careful on the kind of the size that you're making and keep them a little bit smaller. Okay, the regular ones are out of the oven and cooling off on my cutting board here. These little ones are so good with the bacon. I do like them with the bacon and the cheese, but I actually think I prefer them like this with onion gravy. Anyway, friends, I'm not going to show you how I make the onion gravy today because the video isn't about the gravy. It is about the knish. If you haven't had knish before, 
you should make some. They're so delicious. Especially if you love potatoes. Anyway, friends, I will put my recipe card in the description box below for you. Oh, you know what? I will let Mr. Goff give you a taste test. I'll stand it up a little bit, but absolutely delicious. Okay, well, is there some with meat? Mmm. That's good, baby. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Kanish is definitely what's for lunch. The pastry around the outside is so yummy. My mom will be stopping by to pick hers up soon because she's bringing my granddaughter home and she's super excited about it. This is her favorite thing. My mom's a vegetarian, so this is a perfect main dish for her, the big ones. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Man, that's delicious, babe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing he doesn't remember when I made these for a Super Bowl last, but I didn't have even one left. Okay, I absolutely love Kanish. If it's on the menu, I'm ordering it if I'm there. Anyway, friends, I do hope you give these a try. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including these. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.